Okay, we are back with another episode of Puck Pod by BD Sports. I'm here with Christian and Dave. You guys know how we start this. Christian, how was your week? I was just saying, it was a long week, kind of similar to last week, but without any, any like, major things happening. I, I mean, I guess, you know what, okay, there was St. Paddy's, so there was that. Um, my my St. Paddy's, I don't know, not not the best for reason. Um, how, how can I put this? Uh without sounding gross foods and fluids not staying where they want to uh reasons okay so uh yeah it was uh maybe a little overboard for me but uh so you you achieved st patty's day Uh, like see this is somebody else told me somebody else told me that too and i I don't look at it like that i would you know what maybe i should i I gotta look at it like that dave yeah i won st patty's totally (laughs) how about you man man (laughs) Uh, yeah, no, dude, I completely agree with you there. Uh, St. Patty's was probably the highlight of the week. And even that has already felt like three, like half a week away. I mean, it technically has been half a week away, but it feels like it's like, it's not like, oh, St. Patty's felt, it felt like yesterday. Like, you know what I mean? But yeah, uh, yeah, again, dude, long week. It was, it was one of those weeks where I had plans for St. Patty's and I was just so amped up to get to that that night did that night had like had my fun and now it's like now i'm just still i'm still like kind of coming down from it but you know brian what about you man uh i just doing online stuff online classes work i I actually didn't go out for st patrick's day just like i've been watching a lot of tv like the past two days i've had the past two days off but wait you guys both partied on st patrick's day yes or I did. Yeah. I, know, but Christian. Oh, I, yeah. I, I don't know about party, but yeah. Yeah. Dude, you yeah. had some fun. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I haven't partied for St. Patrick's Day since before COVID. Because do you remember the, how, like, it happened? Um, like, right before COVID? Like, sorry, St. Patrick's yeah. Day. Like, COVID happened right before happened, St. Patrick's yeah. Day that year. Then you had two years off. And then last year, I didn't do anything. And so this year, I didn't do anything. So just looking at it now, yeah, I haven't done anything for St. Patrick's Day in a while. And, I don't feel like I'm missing out on much, but you know, well, like, I'm trying Brian? to think. Last year was it a Thursday? Like because this week, I mean, yeah. this year landed on a Friday. That made it. I think so. That made it a lot. It was either a Wednesday a or a Thursday because I I, yeah. I distinctly remember having to work in the morning the next day. So I was asked. I I, I do remember going out, but like I was like yeah. by ten ten thirty eleven, I was like I I gotta go home. Like I. I didn't want. I didn't have like the experience. It was just like a night for me, basically, right? Of, but yeah, but today was the, last thing yeah. was the the event, basically. Out of all the um the college party days, St. Patrick's gotta be the worst one for me. I just it's not it's not the same as like I don't know like a homecoming or like any other of those events. But regardless, you just hate the Leafs. That's what it is. Okay, you just <laughs> you hear St. Patrick's, you're like, oh, it's St. Pat's. Uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what. Those St. Patrick jerseys are so nice. And um, I did watch the game that you guys played against uh, the Senators where you guys wore the St. Pat's. Gorgeous jerseys. Pretty good game, too. But uh, instead of talking about the Leafs, let's go into my team. Let's go into the Capitals. Christian pointed out a very interesting stat. I don't remember what the stat was, but it basically was that he's a minus. I think it has something to do with him being a minus 11 right now. Him Him being Rasmus Sandin. Yeah. Yeah, they've read my mind there. So I don't yeah. think that it's his fault particular, just because of the fact that he is our number one, and we stink, boys. Like, if you're a number one defenseman on a bad team, you're gonna get you're gonna get shelled, right? It's just how it is. But what I will say is that if he's willing, if he he does stand out as a player, like I've said in the past. But if you're standing out on a bad team, that's a good thing, especially because I'm just gonna read this stat just for the context. Yeah. Um, this is from Tom Gulitti. Yeah, this is just verbatim his tweet. Uh, Rasmus Sandin is far from the only one struggling defensively for the Caps. So he agrees with Brian there. Um, but he has been on a nightmare run when when he's been on the ice for 13 of the last 16 even strength goals they've allowed in the past four games. Uh, he's a minus 11 during that stretch. We, we talked about it in our chat too. Like, my, like the, the minus 11 stat, I'm not really focused on that one. That's kind of whatever. Um, but the the thirteen of sixteen even strength goals that's 
you can you can call it a trend, but it's only a four game sample size. Um, and what are it's some of the points that you guys were bringing up? Yeah, Dave, you made a good point. What did you, what do you, where did you put a little bit of the not the blame, but where what do you think maybe the cause of this? Um, well, yeah. So listen, I don't think there's any doubt that at some at some point maybe starting now on Washington that that Rasmus Sandin will be a top four, top two defenseman in this league. Yeah. Uh, will he hit yeah. that top two status? We're not sure. He certainly started playing like it for a, for a hot minute there. But he was coming from a Leaf team where he was playing six, like six defense, like six D minutes, sometimes being scratched. Actually, quite quite often actually being scratched, like a lot more than many people would like to um, to admit. Like he was getting scratched for a guy like Justin Hall. Uh, I think in past years, years, right? Like this is not as much, but in past years, like playoff time last yeah. year, we didn't see Sandy at all. At all. That was injury like, related, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, still, but, like, well, when he came back, they didn't throw him back in. That started to lead to that to the fractured relationship between him yeah. and the team, like the the team, the head office, the front contract office, contract negotiations over the summer. Exactly right. So, um, I think maybe right now it's of of course, like Brad, like you mentioned before. Any, like, your defense core is blown to hell. Like, there's no defense core there right now. So to expect, you know, Norris winners up and down that that lineup, like, you're not going to get that. But what I'll say to that is maybe he's probably just playing just a tad. Like, I, I think these are just the growing pains coming in, uh, you know, He's he's jumped up from like it was like 15 minutes a night to like over 21 I think a night like that's a full it was, it was like 25 sometimes man when I would look yeah at the like box he, forward, man. like you it know what I mean nuts. like if it's if that like even just six minute like a six minute difference like you you, you yeah. still gotta adjust to that right so um of of course like he was probably playing over his head to some point I don't think I think he started like it started to crater maybe like it's bottomed out now I don't think he's probably defensively this bad. I don't even think the Caps core like their defense gonna say core, too, yeah. is this bad either. I think it's just yeah. starting to plateau now and maybe we've seen the worst of it. Maybe it's got a little bit more um cratering to do. Uh but you know it's just an unfortunate stat. Like he had such a good run and now it's starting to get tainted just a little bit. It's an it's a, a, bit. it's a number that's um not cherry picked, I would say, but it's a number that's a product of him getting more play time, and that's fundamentally what it is. But I'm not concerned. I don't think anybody should be concerned. Um, on a brighter note, John Carlson is coming back soon. It turns out that I'm super he- happy for him, man. Like I didn't realize the extent. I, well, I think we knew when it happened. Like it was crazy, the ear stuff or whatever. But hearing all of like um, all of the quotes and articles about him coming back. Uh, fracturing what is orbital bone, um, th- having to basically reattach his ear. Like my God, I'm I'm excited. I'm honestly gonna tune in to see Carlson just come back. Just the, I hope it's a, a home game. I don't know. Have they said like how close he is? Or as, as of right still now, still playing by ear. It's no soon. pun intended. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, so the answer is soon. No date, but we'll see. Okay. To be honest. I'd rather he just take the rest of the season if he wants and just rest up because it gets a big injury. And let's be honest, like I know we're making a playoff attempt push, but let's be honest, hey, it's done. You know, I mean, listen, Bri, I was just having a look at that. Those, um, I, we're, we're gonna bring, I'll bring this up more before. Like I was looking at the standings, but some of the um, late season playoff pushers aren't doing too hot. You're you're doing a bit better than a couple of those. So uh, you know, I like I don't know what to say. Like I know. honestly, good, honestly, awesome for for John Carlson. And if anybody ever tells you guys that hockey players aren't the toughest athletes on the planet. Like take no look, like look no further than John Carlson right there. Like, and that's like item or um, case number one of like, I, you could literally name off like a thousand different stories of people. And it's just the people we know. Like these are the, yeah. these are the injuries we know. Those right? are the surface many, line. 
Yeah, NHL. That's that's another thing too. Like that's NHL stories we're getting. We're not getting into like European leagues or uh, minor leagues here as well. Like people pushing for that. The like, best is when a team gets knocked out of the playoffs. Well, okay, not the best thing. But well, not you know, the best. You know, I know you know, what you're saying, but you know, they get eliminated, and then you get the list of oh X Y Z is out for three months. Yeah. X Y Z has Lock, six lock your clean out day, and the guy says <laughs> yes, oh, or actually. Half of my leg is missing. I don't know where it is. I have I no bone it. left in my arm. <laughs> if you, here's my arm. is just pure jello. The, yeah. The funny, not the funniest. Uh, that's going to sound morbid. But um, the the most surprising or like something to just make you think, I believe this was the 2019 Cup Final. It was uh, the Bruins and the Blues, right? Did Was it not Patrice Bergeron who played through punctured like three series with a p- punctured lung? Like, dude, yeah, so this, this guy can't breathe. Okay, maybe did, yeah. yeah, see, I, I always thought that that was from, like, 2014. Maybe it is from 2019. Oh, maybe you know what? Right. I don't know. It's got to be. I know I it's know. the Bruins, and it's one of their, their deep cup I'm run almost years. sure it's Patrice. I'm, yes. I'm almost sure and it's Yeah, Patrice. it's got to be him, too. Yeah. Okay. That, that's the, always the one that I think about where I'm like, you're a goddamn warrior, and I hate you. I despise you. For, yeah. me, <laughs> for, the one, for me, the one I remember is um the broken hand, Backstrom. And uh, yeah, our like our cup one. Okay. That's the one that sticks out to me. Yeah, but Dave, you mentioned 2019 playoffs. Who was the goalie for the Blues during the 2019 playoffs? Ooh, are we already gonna get into that? Yeah, <laughs> I want to mention one thing. I want to mention one thing okay. before we make the transition. Just about John Carlson there. I know Brian said, "Yo, just take the rest of the season off." It's it. The season is chalked. It's cursed. Don't come back. I'm gonna. I'll I'll be on the flip side and I'll say. There's nothing really to play for. There's no pressure for him to go all out, but I think it would be really good for his confidence just to see the ice again, to play some games and say, hey, I've been out for a long time. It's good to just be able to do this again going into the offseason. Imagine if he didn't get to play for the rest of the season and then you have to have still that whole offseason and you're just waiting for training camp. So I honestly kind of take the reverse uh, standpoint here. I think it's good for him to just, just get a taste of NHL hockey again, right? Get it back into his veins. And uh, before we go, now been your time. No, oh, just, okay. Sorry. You got, I, like, I just want to like rebuttal. Point. Yeah. Um. So, John Carlson's one of the guys that has miles on him. Like, we have a there's like five or six guys on this team that have years and years of playoff experience and damage. And I think that he's like, if he's a, if I had to make a list of guys that deserve rust and just like your body. Needs needs to take the time. He's like top three on the list. Number one being Oshie. That guy's a broken body. But I I feel yeah. like I feel like that's that's you like as a fan and somebody who's got um you know maybe some more empathy towards that type of stuff, Bry. But I think as a person, I don't think he cares. he's not that guy. Like, I think yeah. he I think he understands the risks. Like you have to understand the risks that you're putting yourself through every night that you step onto that ice. Like anything could happen, right? Uh, the the Carlson injury in itself was like a freak. Like it wasn't something that was like, like it wasn't a hit. Like you know, that's a slap shot. From was that not from his own teammate as no, well? No, no, like, ben, well, ex te- ex oh, line mate Ben and Dylan. Ex teammate, yeah. Brandon Dylan. Brian okay. never lives that down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know what I mean. Like you, you take the risk anytime you step on the ice. So if he's got the opportunity to step back on the ice, uh, he'll take. It. I think he will. I'm more. I see. I'm. I'm honestly. I'm in the middle of both of your points because I understand Christian's point, and I also feel Brian's point because it's like, dude, you've given so much to the sport already. You you deserve maybe a couple extra weeks that will lead into a couple extra months. Like you, if anybody's gonna deserve it, it's probably John Carlson amongst others on that team. Uh, but I also see Christian's point as well. I I probably and I think he. Probably is going to say, like, if the doctors say I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. And, you know, I'll probably suit up for the last, like, I don't know, five games, probably seven games. Yeah. So we'll see. Okay. Uh, and I guess on that note, we will shift over to my favorite goaltender in the league. He's, oh, God, every time his name gets brought up, it's always something. Uh, like, it's always just such a such a joy to talk about. Mr. A, Mr. A, 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 H. Whoa, AHL himself, Jordan Bennington. I said it before. I'll say it again. He's all all Jordan Bennington is is a piss baby who gets paid six million dollars a year 
to not like to just be a bad goalie. Like he's mediocre. He's I don't even know if he'd cut it in the AHL right now. Like that's how bad he's been this year, last year, and I think the year before. His numbers haven't been like his ha- numbers haven't been hot since he went on an incredible run uh, leading St. Louis to their first ever Stanley Cup. Like, can you guys like even debate something like that? Like he he honestly hasn't been good. The fact he's making $35 million from the St. Louis Blues is like money laundering. Like, like somebody should arrest that guy for tax but tax fraud. It's it's not even it's not even the um the performance that's like confusing. It's the antics. Like what that's is he probably doing? Yeah, it's never exactly. for goalie reasons. We're never talking about guys. Look at Binner and just like absolutely suck. Well, he does suck in that, but it's not like some egregious random thing. It's never about goaltending. It's always about him getting outside of the, the crease and doing some random crap. Dave, what was the random crap he did this time? <clears throat> okay, so the game was against uh, the, this was the Blues and the Wild. The Blues were up, I think, like three one at one point or four, maybe four one. They were up by a couple goals, and Minnesota, you know, loaded with some firepower. Maybe not as much as in years past, but they've still got some good players there. They came roaring back and the they scored these days. Uh, definitely a lot more. Well, maybe not because Jacob Brand is having himself a pretty good recent run, but that's that's a different uh, story. Um, so I, I believe they scored five unanswered on him, and the the go ahead goal was a Ryan Hartman power play goal. And as Ryan Hartman is wheeling away in celebration, he listen. I can't even like you can't even blame Ryan Hartman for it because he's in front of the net. Binner's like just on the edge of his crease and he kind of clips, like he clips him barely and Bennington just loses it. I'm like, it's like, dude, what are you doing? And, and in this kerfuffle, Jordan Bennington goes in with his blocker and he goes to just give him like uh overhand, like, yeah, like, I don't even know. Like this guy thought he was in the, the in MMA or something. Straight like, out Superman of punch. But Straight with out the WWE. Blocker. I have to say, Straight out of like, WWE. we had, we had, when was the Oscars? Was it like two weeks ago or last week? Anyways, Oscars was might have been that, It might have been around that, that time of the game. So. Yeah, yeah. So listen, so we had the Oscars recently and I'm sure there was some category for like cinematography. Like this, this person's the best cinematographer. You know, they're really good with the camera work. Just the, the, the framing of the picture and the scene. Shout out to whoever ran the broadcast for that game because it, Hartman scores. There's the slow zoom in on him as he, like Dave said, he clips the pad. You get the little, um, you get the little bundle of Minnesota Wild players hugging it out after the goal, and it just all you see is Bennington's glo- uh, yeah. blocker hand, and it's like you don't you don't see him crawl into the frame. You just see the hand, and you see Hartman's face. Just oh, it's just it was. Dude, that whole scene of the year right there, okay? That whole scene, that that entire scene was something straight out of WWE. Like Vince McMahon was, himself yeah. couldn't have scripted that any better. <laughs> like, and it's not even just that because you brought up that point and it was like, it looked like when, um, you know, the good guys are off celebrating and then the, the heel just comes in and he goes to attack. But yes. then we had the surprise guest, you know, Royal Rumble the entrance. Face. The you know, when, I don't know when what Stone Cold music Steve, would be, but when Stone yeah, Cold yes. Steve Austin's glass breaking <laughs> uh theme song comes on, and that's all you hear, and the crowd goes yeah. wild. You know what's coming because Flower himself is skating down Mark Andre Fleury for anybody who didn't get that that uh that and I don't know that nickname, whatever. He comes skating from his own net and he you know he's trying to square up with Jordan Bennington. He wants the smoke. Unfortunately, we didn't get the potentially greatest outcome to this scenario in a goalie fight between Jordan Bennington and Mark Andre Fleury, which I think, no doubt in my mind, Mark Andre Fleury would have wiped the floor with him like a mop, like a Swiffer wet jet. He would have wiped him up. Uh, like, do you understand how angry you have to make Mark Andre? Like. How do you get Mark Andre Fleury that mad that he wants to fight you straight stri- straight up? Like he's genuinely, for by all accounts, one of the nicest people in the league. We could see, you know, years past, he's pulled like pranks on his teammates, and everybody's like, "Oh, Flower, what what a funny guy Flower is." How do you get him that mad? Like you have to be doing something astronomically douchey 
in order to get Mark Andre Fleury that mad that he wants to beat you up. I'll tell you what though, he is the one. Well, he is like one of those guys in the league that would set Mark Andre Fleury off. Also, do you guys think that um, Bennington's picked up the the notoriety around the league, kind of like Avery did or Marshan had yet? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. There's no one, who's coming to to his defense. There's there's no player around the league that's going to say coach. I agree with Bennington. Yeah, exactly, exactly. His own coach is saying, "Dude, just play goalie. You're a goaltender. Please do that." Um, I don't know if you guys saw. I just saw this now, and I haven't watched the clip, but I have some of the the quotes from it. Um, did you guys see Flurry mic'd up during yes. that moment? He apparently, yeah. you guys, were, yes. yeah? yeah. And he's like, "It'll be fun. It'll be good." Like, oh my it's, god, the ref shut it down. Like, like a hundred percent. Yeah, well, I know that they have to because um, I, I believe the rule is as soon as a helmet comes off, they have to intervene. Um, so enough. so let's say let's say they were to get into the fight, both goalies would have had their helmets on. Let's hypothetically, they could have allowed it to continue, but I believe because I think Flurry had his off as soon as he was coming down, they had to put a stop to it immediately. Which fair enough. I get I'm not it. too sure on the on the rule for that, but I'm not gonna lie. As a neutral, I kind of wanted to see a goalie fight on my highlight reel. That would have been enjoyable. But dude, 100. percent Even if you're a Blues fan, you're obviously if you're a Wild fan, 100. percent I'm now curious. Like, is there a goalie in your guys' mind that is gonna step up to the plate like Flurry did and try this again? Like, try to get the fight with Vinner? Like, who's is there a guy that comes to mind, or is really any goalie? Could, it could be someone to do it. Like I, I'm thinking, like leaf wise, Murray would not do that at all. Sammy, I don't know. You'd have to get Sam Snuff like pretty mad. I don't really think he'd be that type of guy either. Markstrom, I don't Is know there... who would be Ooh, Markstrom. Yeah, Markstrom's maybe. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Apparently, um, Jeff Merrick always says this when I listen to him on uh, on his uh, his podcast. He always says the goalie he thinks is Kachekov. But, like, I, I haven't really? seen Kachekov do, like, crazy stuff. But he had a goalie fight in the minors, and he had a goal, like, in the same week. And this is, like, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, maybe. So he he's convinced that that's going to be the guy to go one-on-one with Bitter. I'm just trying to think of, like, some actual... Are there NHL any... Guys. I don't know. Like, okay, goalies themselves are known to be a wild bunch weird. of... Weird. Like, they're weirdos. Yeah. Like, let's not show yeah. it here. Uh... Is there anybody as hot-headed and weird as Jordan Bennington? I don't think so. Like, like, okay, I guess, I guess in this example right now, like you have a goalie who's not that hot-headed and probably not as weird, who lost it because you know he saw his boys were in trouble and he needed to step in. Maybe that's un- like that's gonna be what it takes to see something like this again. But off the top of my head. I can't think of any goalie in the league that might even want to attempt yeah. something like that. I, I'm Maybe somebody's trying to make look. a name. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, which Kachekov you could throw in that category. My cursory yeah. look gets me maybe two names that I could maybe, maybe convince myself other than Markstrom. Um, where is it now? I lost him. Okay. I feel like Hellebuck's got a decent temper. But he's a he's a really good goalie, and I don't know if he'd be like he'd be the type of guy where he's like I can't fight because I'd be putting my team at a disadvantage because I'm an actually good goaltender, unlike Bennington. But he's a guy who I could see do it. Um, and then the other the other name, I don't really know if he'd do it, but Quick, I, I feel like Quick could get Ooh. riled up. It's one of the one but. things I don't think Quick has achieved or done in his career. Interesting. Right? Yeah, yeah I throw that on the resume, man. Throw it on the resume. I don't know if we got any more Vegas versus Blues games, but uh, yeah, I just, I just, uh, I thought that was funny to take a look at. I don't really have too much to add to the Bennington stuff. Um, he's, he's, he's a, he's a beast of his own. We'll see when the next time is he does some crazy stuff, so we can talk about it again. So, uh, well, you sorry, the last to... thing, yeah. the last thing I want to say is all I know is that if Jordan Bennington was above 900 even if he was a 905 this year like got a lot more the st the st louis blues would not be would be in a playoff position right now they might not have even traded like had to have traded guys like tarasenko o'reilly achari barbashev if their goaltender played goal (laughs) 
<laughs> like, it's crazy, it's that. crazy to think, man. Like, and go back to the beginning of the season, and no one was saying, or at least not the majority of people were saying the Blues would miss the playoffs. Like, these guys, well, Riley, Tarasenko, all these guys weren't on the trade board. We had the season because that seemed like not possible. Yeah. We had 50 games of proof last yeah. season that the St. Louis Blues were one of the hottest teams in the league. Maybe, maybe they were too hot for their own good. Jordan Cairo, Robert Thomas, Ivan Barbashev. Uh, I'll never forget, man. They had nine 20 goal scorers. Nine. Their yeah. whole top nine, every single one of them had at least 20 goals. Like, imagine yeah. that in the Leafs. Imagine if every single player in the top nine had 20 goals. You couldn't imagine it. No, it's an incredibly deep offense. Yeah. So, so we had, we had like a burden of proof last year saying that, you know, maybe we should start taking the Blues a bit more serious once again. Then they locked up. Robert Thomas and Kairou to long extensions were like, wow, those things are going to age like a fine wine because they can only go get better from here. Granted, those guys haven't been off like offensively. They haven't been, they've struggled a little bit this year, right? Heating but, up a little bit. I think Kairou, what did he have? How do you, he's yeah, I think, at the beginning of the point. year though, I know, I know Kairou was r- off to a really bad start and, and, and a hey, lot of the, we talked about the coach calling out Bennington, the coach called, Thomas and Cairo not too um yeah not, not too long, long ago, ago as well. well yeah he's been calling out the whole team all year right but you know how nice would it have been for them who have been struggling offensively this year to at least get a little bit of support from their you know their last line of defense the guy that they that the franchise invest is investing 35 million dollars i believe over the next 5 years after this one like come on dude like help help yourself to help the team out that's all that's all they're asking for here. I don't think that's too much to ask for. And hopefully the Blues get that situation short, sorted out. I think we're all in the same opinion of this. Shout out to Dave because he's the one who called it in the first episode of this season. Yeah, it was pretty I, early. I will I will give you that. I'll give you that. But um let's move on to the next topic. So I don't know if you guys have seen have seen it, but the Rangers are actually on a four game win streak. And the last two games they've played, they've torched their opponents. They beat Nashville seven nothing, I think, and they beat the Penguins six nothing. They've woken up. They're awake, and uh, it's it's scary, boys. It's scary. I'm telling you, the amount of like interviews I I've heard over the like basically since the deadline of traditional hockey dudes like we're talking guys that are former players from like the '90s, um, those types of era analysts say oh the rangers have too many cooks in the kitchen too many chefs who's going to take charge they don't have enough uh, i mean they've got too many guys to fit on a power play unit uh, and we always talk about how insane their their both power play units are um and i just hear that take and i'm like are you kidding me like that's have you looked at the bruins have you I, do you see how they're going insane with their record over there why can't the rangers be the same team and they're showing their full potential um and and if I was already on the boat at the deadline that, yeah, they're they're my number one Metro team, slightly ahead of the Devils. Um, I had them ahead of the Hurricanes because of the patch Redding inj- injury and because of the Svechnikov injury, uh, that's, that's even more so the case. I don't know if anyone's going to catch the Hurricanes in the regular season to get that number one spot. Maybe the Devils. They're only a point behind, but Carolina do ha- does have two games at hand. But um, come playoff time, and you're asking me who's coming out of the Metro side of the of the bracket, I'm, I'm picking the Rangers, and these two games um, are just kind of proof of, of why I think that. So I will bring up, like, what a perfect time to start getting hot. The Carolina Hurricanes, now, all three of these records are going to be relatively similar. The Carolina Hurricanes are 6-4-0 and oh in their last 10. The Devils... Five, three, and two. So they're, I, I guess you could say, just about 500. The Rangers are seven, two, and one. So seven and three. So they're the hottest team right now between all of those three. Um, now, they might not make the, the push to get first place. But between the Devils, the Rangers, and the Hurricanes, out of those three, who lost the trade deadline? The Hurricanes, right? They they were go they were going big fish hunting. They were going big big deer hunting. Those guys were aiming for bucks, and they came up with you know a couple of pheasants, basically, right? Um. So 
now I think now is when we're going to start to see can the Hurricanes stave off the other two teams below them. Uh, listen, I will put my faith in the Hurricanes. I think that they're a fantastic team. But man, the Rangers are the Rangers and the Devils. I think the Rangers 100% are going to give them a real run for their money. I I don't know. Do the Rangers even like do the Rangers pull in front of the Devils? Like, do they take second spot it's and gonna, take home ice for the playoffs? The, it's gonna Listen, be the, if they can, the go Devil, ahead, Brian. The Devils are going to win the division because um, I'm pretty sure the Devils have an easier schedule going forward. Like, I know for a fact Carolina has to play like the Atlantic three in the next three games or something like that. Like. Or the next four games, like they're literally playing Boston, um, Tampa, and Toronto, like one, two, three, or something like that. And, and that's bit. after that's after like that's not. I wouldn't say getting shown out by the Leafs, but the Leafs played a pretty hard game. They played a pretty solid game, like a, a Carolina type game against Carolina. But but my, okay, but my Carolina point, didn't feel really threatening. I had too many points during that game. My point is, which, which goes to yeah, go, go is back. that the Devils also only have to play Boston once. And I think they play the Rangers one. So assume that they lose both those two games. Carolina drops um, six points. uh, New Jersey drops four points. New Jersey would be ahead if you think of it like that. But the issue with this is that if New Jersey takes its first speed in the division, uh, the Rangers face Carolina. And I'm leaning Rangers now. Like, as we look into it, with the form that the Rangers have caught. I don't don't know how you don't pick the Rangers. There, there's I, no I team. Honestly, maybe no. I was gonna say the Islanders, but even no, I'd rather like the, the Hurricanes are obviously better than the Islanders, and they do really similar things. I don't. I, I take the Rangers against the field of the Metro. I, I'm taking them for the Eastern Conference Finals, bar no, bar none. Like, that's well, it. we have to keep our eyes peeled this week, especially because Tuesday, so tomorrow, the uh, Rangers are at home to the Hurricanes. Thursday, they head to Raleigh to play the Hurricanes. So that's a that's real big. Really that's a four point two game, you know, rubber band match right there. That that potentially can shift the tide in the Metro uh, for the rest of the season, at least for this week, one hundred percent. So we'll, we'll see like where that goes from there. And another thing too, um, if you compare the Rangers, the Devils, and um, the Hurricanes since the trade deadline, it seems like. Carolina just been taking L after L after L. I know Pacioretty happened a little bit before the trade deadline, but then they lost their best player in uh, Shpechtikov. And meanwhile, when you look at the Rangers, they're just keep they're just picking up heat, picking up heat. And with New Jersey, they obviously got the guy they wanted. They obviously got the guy that everybody wanted. So even going into it, like the, the vibes just doesn't seem like it's all there for Carolina. Meanwhile, for the Rangers, it's through the roof right now. If, in that sense, like... And it, and it might only get hotter. Like... S- seven nothing, six nothing, six nothing against you know against the Penguins. Like Penguins and the Rangers, like have a heated rivalry as well. Like anybody in that Metro con- like Metro division has a heated rivalry, just like how you know the Atlantic teams all kind of like everybody hates each other in the Metro, yeah. right? But the, it seems especially like the Rangers and the Pens, they they don't they don't really fancy each other that much either. Like Let's go back to last lot. year in the playoffs, man. Exactly, right? Like right? Penguin, that should be a game that the Penguins get up for. Absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's without right? taking in the context of they're fighting for their playoff lives. And and for for the Rangers to like literally systematically just tear that that team apart, I think that even that probably says even more than the seven nothing against Nashville. Like, and and that's not even taking shots at the Preds. Like, man, like they could potentially only get even hotter from here. Like they're burning like. Like a star, like a I don't even know, like the sun right the now. Crazy thing too right? is, it's a back to back. No, like, it's not. They're two. Wait, no, wait, wait. I think he's saying Nashville and Pittsburgh were yeah. back to back games. Yeah, oh. like, like in terms of were they actually wow. like day after day? Like it was eighteen nineteen. Like okay, like back yeah, to so back games. Back. So so they put up a fantastic game one night, and then they followed that up with maybe even better, like an even better performance. Like that's kind of unheard. Like it's very, very tough to do that. And I think Christian's frozen. I think Christian froze too. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. okay. Well, we'll proceed without him. Um, th- if that's the case, you're, you're putting up back to back six, seven goal shutouts. Can you guys imagine the situation going into the playoffs? Like you're coming with heat. You have all this talent. You have all this power, and all of this um, 
just energy, just good energy. And then on top of it, you have the best goalie in the world. I'm scared of this team. Yeah, I think every team but should be. You, you have the best goalie in the world who hasn't really been the best goalie in the world, but is could potentially start becoming the best goalie in the it, world again. It doesn't because you've got the team in front of you now. And it, it doesn't matter if you're not the best goalie in the world for that season. All you need to do is just catch heat a week or two before playoffs. Yeah, and then ride that in. <laughs> But, and it looks like that's what he's doing right now. Oh, he's back? It happens. Don't worry. I was, it was just so sudden, too, man. Like, I was in full conversation, and then I just looked and get, I'm like, wow, you guys' faces are, like, really frozen. You just get, you guys are just really, <laughs> yeah, like, A poker you know, face? The, uh... Yeah, a really good poker face, yeah. The what I miss? <laughs> uh, we just finished up with Rangers. We're going into the Sens and Sabres, both of which, uh, kind of falling off. I mean, we, we saw the Sens play the Leafs, um... I think it was like three days ago, two days ago on the St. Patrick's Day. But it's kind of disappointing that both teams haven't really done too odd as of late. But I don't know. What's your take on that? Just to throw some numbers behind it. So Sabres right now is 69 games played, 72 points. Uh, Senators also 69 games played, 71 points. So they're at very similar spots in the standings between them. And the playoff line is Washington, who's played 71 games with 73 points. Florida, 69 games, 77 points. Pittsburgh, same amount of games, 78 points. So you've got Ottawa, Buffalo, Florida, and Pittsburgh all with the same amount of games played, and yet Pittsburgh is six points up on Buffalo, seven points up on the Senators for the second wild card spot. And they they got to jump Florida and Washington while trying to catch the Penguins. That's a really tall task for teams that have been so hot and cold all season long. And it is a little dis- not disappointing because in the grand scheme of things, these are successful seasons, I'd say, for both teams. Um, just looking at some of the progress that's been made, some of the players that have been added, some of the internal growth from guys like Dylan Cousins. Um, you look at the Senators, Jake Sanderson in his rookie season has been phenomenal. They added Jacob Chikrin. Um, you've seen that their acquisitions have played fantastically for them. Claude Giroux, DeBrinkett, on and on and on. Um, but it just seems like now that the chips have been on, on, on the line, they just haven't been able to go toe to toe with some more veteran teams. And I say that with the Leafs having lost to the Sabres, but once again, we look at the Sabres and they, they went up against the Bruins and the Bruins showed, um, who's boss. And I guess that is an expected result, but seven, nothing when you're in a playoff race is yeah. Just like the Penguins conversation. It's tough to see. I don't really see Buffalo, Ottawa being able to creep back in here. And that kind of leaves us with three teams. Before we go to three teams, you guys got anything on the Sens or Sabres? Yeah, I got one more thing. Um, you said that, like, the Senators, sorry, not the Senators, the Sabres got smashed by Boston 7 nothing, And this happened, there was a similar scoreline between Boston and Buffalo that happened earlier this season. And then I said, when that, when that game was played, I said that this could be a telling for game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. The game that they just lost recently, six nothing, seven nothing, or whatever it was, could also be a showing of game two of the Stanley Cup playoffs. If your team's not ready for the playoffs, it's not ready, and the regular season is the ultimate way to show it. I agree with you. Both W's for this in like both great seasons for the Senators and Sabres, trajectories there on their way up. But you're not there yet. No no need to get your license if you don't have a car, right? So that's that's my wow. take on that. <laughs> Damn. You make that one up, bro? I've never heard that I did, one. I did. Okay. That's crazy. Right. Um, dude, I think one team who would have... I know a lot of the talk in Toronto was, wow, the Leafs should have uh, targeted... It was at the trade deadline, the Leafs should have targeted a uh, scoring forward, you know, top six winger, and also address some of their goaltending problems. Now, we came on this podcast, me and Christian, we said, was there a goalie out there on the market that would necessarily improve the team in the playoffs and we kind of came to the agreement that there probably wasn't in in the short term right now you don't think that buffalo should have maybe inquired like you're going into the rest of this regular season with 41 year old craig anderson who's played well i can't lie and uko pekalukanen who's i i believe only like 20 24 25 you know, second full year in the league. Like, he's not a proven, com- like, player yet. And they, they, have uh, they also have too, who just has Eric Comrie, here. who's been awful as well. Isn't I believe they left Eric Comrie in for all. 
when they got smoked by Dallas, like 10, three, that was another thing too. So, so it's not only are they like losing, but they're also losing by wide margins a couple of days ago, or I think it was yesterday against, um, against the Bruins seven, nothing a couple of weeks ago, it was 10, three against the stars. Like those aren't the types of, you know, performances that you want to see for a team that's trying to contend in the playoffs. And and it just goes to show on their record. They're two, six and two right now in their last 10. I believe Ottawa has one more win than them. I believe if, like I in the last 10, it's like three, three, five and three, something like that. So, and you know, oof. I think that it's okay that the Sabres don't really have a goalie for this season because they just inked Devin Levi recently. So yeah, I think they're going to give him a chance. The, the kid's been bounced around like to every single team in the league at this point, but I, I, I think that it's, it'd be a good idea to let him get the chance, like whatever closing games for um for this season, and then potentially start him next season. We need to see how he does, obviously, but yeah, we'll we'll see. Moving into the next topic, uh, unless you guys have something left about Senators and Sabers. Okay. Better luck next year. I don't know. <laughs> They'll, they'll be back. They'll be back next year. Not too much luck, okay? Leafs have to still make the playoffs. Not too much luck, just a little bit. Speaking, um, you know what? We'll do this. We'll do this first. Christian, you said you had two stats that you wanted to bring up quickly. Okay. We, talk, we talked about the Predators. Uh, I, I shouldn't even said that. Oh, now you guys, okay. Guys, who the hell is Tommy Novak? What do you guys know about Tommy Novak? Absolutely nothing. Well, I'm His name and that's he plays it? for the Predators, yeah. He plays for the Predators. I feel like, honestly, if I didn't even say that, you, you, we wouldn't even know he's a hockey player, okay? And I, I'm saying this, I'm not pretending like I know who Tommy no- Novak was for the whole season or whatever. Anyways, so there's this fella. His name is Tommy Novak. He plays for the Predators. Um, I believe he's 25 years old. I'm going to pull up his page right now. Uh, yeah, he's 25 years old. This is his first full season in the bigs. He played 27 games last year, had seven points. He's played 37 games this year. How many points does Tommy Novak have for the Nashville Predators in 37 games? I just looked it up. I had it open um, on my screen. I know the answer. So, Dave, you got to take the shot. Uh, well, if you're bringing up this type of stat, it's definitely yeah. more than seven. I don't know yes. if like he's at a – wait, how many games you said he was at? 30? 37 games. Played. 37. So, it's going to be something ridiculous. Uh, I'll say 25, 27. He's got 30. Points. He's got 30 and 37. Okay. This guy like is honestly like just below a point per game. And we just, who that nobody knows this guy. Yeah. No, like, I've what? never heard of him in my life. If you had told, told me like right now that Tommy Novak actually hit the game winning shot for, I don't know, Creighton in the NCAA tournament that's going on right now, I would have believed you. I would have been like, yeah, for sure. That sounds like something. The Creighton plays for the Blue Jays. The Creighton Blue Jays. You know what? I, I bet on the Creighton Blue Jays and they pulled it through for me. So, hey, shout yeah. out to the Creighton Blue Jays. Uh, they got a cool logo, too. Uh, as someone who cheers for the Toronto Blue Jays, right? Um, okay, so that was that was the first thing. Uh, I'm going to now keep an eye on Tommy Novak going forward. Um, and we'll see if he continues to go super underrated. Uh, I, think you, I think the only reason why you had an eye on him is because he plays for your... Pot- like, what is it? What are they? Your third or fourth <laughs> favorite team in the National no, Predators? No, not not even really. It was really just like I had a, I had a nice. You were looking at, at Phil Tomasino. Like, nice. Yeah, Phil I was Tomasino big on highlights. Tomasino highlights. You're like, hey, yeah, this Novak guy seems to be uh, seems to be pretty good. I think Tomasino has been playing well recently too. He's been popping up on yeah, my uh, on my feed a few times. So. Good for them. I think he's got. I think he's got like eleven points in seventeen. So you know he's no he's no Tommy Novak yet, but you know maybe one day he'll become a Tommy Novak. Um, this is a, this is a bit more interesting. I think we can do a little bit more guessing on this one here. So the stat I've got for you guys today is fastest player to four hundred points among twenty thirteen drafted players. Okay, mm-hmm. so drafting twenty thirteen. If you guys, I would say pull up the thing. Uh, pull up the. Let me see if I can find the draft list for you. That's, um, is that the um, points attached? Is twenty thirteen the Barkov McKinnon year? Uh, yes, yes, it is the Barkov McKinnon year. So we're looking at fastest player from the twenty thirteen draft to four hundred points. And by fastest, I'm looking at games played. So not time, not actual days. Um, lowest amount of games played to reach four hundred point milestone. 
so I my first guess would have been Nate Mack, but I know he struggled coming out of the gate with Colorado. Uh, like he wasn't putting up like he's recently been putting up like godlike numbers, but it, it was a little bit dreadful to start his his career in Colorado. Uh, you said Barkoff, right? Has I, it's gotta be it's been? gotta be Barkoff. It's gotta be. Who else would? So who I, else would I've got six names here. I've got the, I've got the top six. Um, okay, is the answer one of these six? The uh, yeah, I've got six names, and I'll, the answer is one of them. Like this, these are the fastest six. Okay, okay. Um, I don't know if you get you guys can maybe try and put it in order. You want to okay, okay. guys? You guys want to do it that way? Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. So you've got McKinnon drafted number one. Barkov drafted number two. You then have Sean Monahan. You've got Bo Horvat. You've got Jake Gensel, and you've got Elias Lindholm. These are your six fastest players to 400 points from 2013 drafted players. You got to put them in an order. Okay, I'm still gonna say Nate Max at one. There's like you guys figure out if you want to work together on this or two separate. You want to do it together, Brian? Yeah, we'll do it all together. Um. So are we saying are we saying Barkov or McKinnon at one? Hold that's, on a second. I think that's uh, Barkov, McKinnon, Lindholm, Horvat, Monahan, right? And then uh Gensel. And Jay Gensel. And Gensel. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um I'm gonna go Barkov one because McKinnon was kind of Barkov one mid, like in his first couple of years. Yeah, that that's that's why that's uh, you know what I, I feel that too, Bri. Okay. Um, one, two, maybe um, maybe Mac two. Like Barkov one, McKinnon two. Number three has got to be, I think. It's, I think it's Lindholm. If I'm being honest, hmm. you know, 40, 40 goals, one hundred points. I know Gensel. Last year. I'm, I'm pretty confident Gensel is last because he didn't pop off. Like he's the one that joined the league last. So, um, yeah, but that's that's another thing. But he plays too, with Sid, so but he, Ugh. yeah, and and he he jumped into the league and it was like, it was like hot. immediately yeah. on fire. That's the problem and. And another thing to Christian's point was he was like not in terms of actual games played. So Nate Mack could have played, let's say, 500 games and hit 400. Gensel would have come in at, you know, maybe game 200 of Nate Mack's career and been on like the same type of pace. You know what I mean? I'm gonna, I'll give you guys oh. this context as well. I'm going to give you guys this context as well. So the, this is the games played for the players oh, okay. on the list, one through six. And so, like it is, it is fairly close between the top three. It is pretty close. Then fourth is kind of in the middle, and then there's a steep drop to five and six. So, number one took them 438 games for 400 points. So, so no one here was able to do it point per game uh, to 400. Okay. okay. Um, then from 438, 454, 465. And then 522, 605, 619. Ooh, so there's it a is, real, yeah. real big gap there. So there's, there's, there's two guys here on this list out of six that took almost 100 more games than uh, fourth place. So, wait, 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 so there's that. Oh, I, oh wait, no, that, that's the case. It's got to be Gensel because he, he's like, like short gotta, amount of time. I, yeah, you guys got to kind of come up with like three guys that played a similar amount of games and then two that have no, played then, almost 100 more. Then it's the inverse. One in the middle. Then it's the inverse. It's literally um, Gensel, Monaghan, Lindholm. Like, and then the, the most played would be like Barkov, Horvat, and uh, McKinnon, that order. And that makes sense. So McKinnon would be, would be yeah. the sixth. McKinnon would technically be the sixth. Barkov would be fifth or fourth, and the Hor- or and the Horvat would be the like fourth or fifth, and then it would be Lindholm, Monahan, and then Getzel. If that makes sense. So okay, let me let me. I feel like you guys are getting a little bit confused though too. Those numbers, like those, aren't their career games play numbers. This yeah. is just how fast it's going to get to four hundred. Yeah. So they've all played more games than yeah. this amount. Well, that that's this is to get too. To like there's no way there's no way that they all hit. Like this is only point four hundred for them this year. Like that's another thing too. Like this had to have happened. This happened recent. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because someone. Well, no, someone on this list hit this hit while recently. Still recently, right? So it's so got to be. Got I, I think. I think Elias recently. Lindholm is probably the like. I think he would have been. Would he have been? 
Because he had like 100 points last year. He did. I I have no idea. Dude, this is this okay, is a you, you stumper. I'm not going to lie to you. you know I think I'm just going to chalk this you gotta one give me up, a dude. confirmed list. Top to bottom, bottom to top, whatever you guys want. Um. Okay. Take it away, Brian. All you. I, I guess so. I can, I can almost confirm based on the way that this is structured. It's cherry picked in his favor. It's got to be against a one. Okay. We'll go. Brian, okay. you got it. Like you, that. you got number one, Brian. You it's, got number no, one. Because it's, okay. it's, it's is it? cherry picked. Yeah, it's cherry picked for him. So get, yeah, Gens was the one that got this this milestone recently. He, he probably. I, I feel like Sasha, like Barkov and McKinnon. I feel. Okay. I feel like Barkov and McKinnon have to be top. Uh, they got to be top three, no? Uh, Brian, do you want to guess or let me just read this list here? One second. Uh. Okay, I, I have a yes. I have a yes. One, Gensel. Okay, so, so Dave was saying, okay, one is Gensel. Dave was saying McKinnon, Barkov are in his top three. Do you have an order you want to put them in, Dave? Who's two and who's three? I think just because I I, I feel like Sasha was so... I think he kind of started a lot better just being a little bit more under the radar than Nate was. Like, he was a lot more high profile. I, I'm going to say Barkov two, Mac three. I have uh, uh, I have Lindholm two Barkov three, really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I'll I'll give you guys the list now at this point. Or else we're gonna be here all day. Yes. So I'll go bottom to top now. We know number one is Gensel. Um. So number six on this list, six hundred nineteen games is Lindholm. He was actually okay. the slowest of these six. The slowest okay. being sixth fastest of the draft class. Um. Bo Horvat at six oh five. So just ahead of Lindholm. Number four. Don Monahan, 522 games. So I thought he would have been, been lower. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, it's just because we had, like haven't heard about him in a while. He's he's in Montreal now, injuries, all that stuff. But he started off really hot, especially as a rookie. I think he had a 30 goal season as a rookie. Um, so yeah, he he hit that 400 milestone pretty quickly. Your top three is Barkov at three, McKinnon at two. And against that one. So Barkov 465 games, McKinnon at 454, so only a nine game difference between those two. And then Gensel at 438. You guys, wow. you guys did uh you guys had the right path there with the thinking. I did I smiled a lot at first time I mentioned Gensel. I'm like, God, they're gonna get it, fuck. But um, yeah, you guys did that. I give I, no excuse on my part. You guys, you guys figured that out. Isn't it a little interesting? Like, we just don't think of Gensel as that guy. Um, but yeah, like you guys said, he entered the league earlier and he basically immediately stepped in. It was on fire, especially that first year. Like we were like, who the hell is this guy? He, and he basically yeah. hasn't missed a beat since he's got like, I think he's got one or two 40 goal seasons in there. And yeah, so he, he had 400 recently and in only 438 games, pretty impressive. I, I, like he's a pretty underrated guy in the grand scheme of things. Yes. Hmm. And he's Good also, um, he also gets the luxury of playing with two very good players but yeah uh, I, yeah, yeah that helps it certainly helps it helps and i can't really say anything he's he's been good in his whole career so uh we'll move on from that that was a pretty fun game it took, fun, up, right? it yeah. took up a lot of it took up i think like six or seven minutes but that's okay oh, all right yeah. we still have i think we have um seven ish minutes if you guys want to talk with the Leafs, if you guys want to do that or if not we can just get the ad reads out and we're good to go I'll it it, it's very fast leap stuff. Very fast leap notes. I don't think me and Dave had too, too much here. Yeah, we can do five minutes here. Um, so yeah, Le- Leafs played on St. Paddy's Day against the Hurricanes. They win that one 5-2. We have that crazy game on Saturday against the Senators in Ottawa. Basically a home crowd for Leafs, all that good stuff. Murray returns to Ottawa. Leafs win it. Was it 5-4 in the shootout? 5-4 in yeah. the shootout, right? Yeah, not, yeah. nine five rounds in shootout too. Nine rounds of a shootout that took five years off of my life. My my life expectancy went down big time. It was a real stressful one, even though we all hate the shootout. Um, once it gets deep like that, you're like, God damn, we got to win it now. You can't waste all my time like that. Um, and yeah, the Leafs pull out the win. And sure, it's a game against the Senators, a team that you expect to beat um, late in the season. But I kind of do have a little bit of um, a few takeaways from this game that I really do like. Um, coming into this weekend, I did talk in our chat with Dave. I was saying, Dave, I really hope they go with Sammy against Carolina on Friday because I want to see Murray finally get that game in against the Senators, his former team. Hasn't played them yet because in the two previous times, there's been like a tweak in warm-up, right? I think one was the, the Nylander shot uh, off of the... The uh, second game of the season yeah. was he was set to play and then the day of, they announced that he 
I, I forget what that injury yeah. was. It was something, and he missed a month after that, right? And then his second injury too. Uh, he missed he missed that game. I think it was yeah yeah the, the start of that during stage, the game. Right? Like, like right right in was that not the warm up? Yeah, that's right. Like, I was insane. I didn't like, watch that game. I was at work. I remember because yeah, yeah I was like, how was Sammy and and Pontus Holberg had the the double minor. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, and we got shelled. It was not a good game for the Leafs. Um, hey, same same story on Saturday, dude. You're the Leafs right. Got shelled. It, it, they did get shelled, but Matt Murray, you know what? So he battled. That, well, he was good he for that battle. game. He, he held. He the was fort. good. Yeah, and honestly, I'm I'm very much impressed by that because listen, there was people who could make that excuse that hey, why is this guy running from facing his former team? We've seen that as well when we faced the Oilers. Not that necessarily Campbell's been running from it, but they certainly don't embrace the moment and say, let's put Jack in in a spot where he's obviously got an emotional connection to this team. Let's see if he rises to the occasion. We never saw that. And it's nice to see with Murray that he didn't run away from the moment this time. And um, he stood up to the plate. He was probably the best player for the Leafs because, yeah, Leafs did not play a good game. It was very much a counterattack game. Um, and really, the Leafs were just opportunistic. That's how they ended up getting this win. They capitalized on this on the minuscule amount of chances they did get but listen i am happy for murray that he was able to pull out that win and i do think it gives him um a little bit of a a um, little bit of an extra oomph going forward and i hope he can carry some of this momentum forward i do think there is people who are giving murray more than a chance than he really deserves if you look at the whole season to start game one of the playoffs and maybe this is just toronto media being toronto media having the conversation just to have it but i hear it kind of often now and I don't know how much is warranted, but this one is a feather in his in his cap that he can say, hmm, I'll make you think about it. Do you have anything on that front, Dave? Have you do you hear that type of stuff? Or is it Sammy's and it's Sammy's to absolutely lose? And he has to be like I, I, terrible down I the stretch. Based on the the way that they've both played this year, I think it should just be game one should still be Sammy's unless Matt Murray literally plays the rest of the year. And he, you know, he gets shutouts in like half those games. Let's just say hypothetically, right? And, and Sammy I would mean, also have to be bad. Like I think, like, and Sammy would, Sammy, yeah. Sammy Sammy wouldn't be able to play. play. Yeah, or he gets hurt or whatever. Extraneating circumstances yeah. there. Uh, I, I still think he's, I still think it's Sammy's net. And I think coming into this season, I would have, if you would have said to me game one, it would have been Sammy or it would have been Murray. I would have been like, oh, that's because one of those two took it for this year and they wrote it for the rest of the year. Uh, and I think they've both on occasions had their moments where they've been great on occasions. They've had their moments where they've been okay. And they both had their occasions where they've been pretty bad. So at the end of the day, it's maybe more of like rolling the dice, but I still think that Sammy deserves that spot maybe more than Murray and then at the end of the day, you still have a like there are other chances where you know you can fall back on the guy behind him. I, I think that's the point where people where we should be making more of a point against. I don't think game one is the this person's a definite starter for the rest of the, for the series because of uh you know he's starting game one. I think we have the uh ability that if the game one starter is not good then you can fall back on your backup for game two. And this is not an is, option we had in previous years. This is the first exactly. year in the Matthews era where we've had this option. It, it was not an option any other year. Yeah, um, I think the only other time was, did, was Freddie not the backup one year to Jack? It was that not uh, the Yes, Montreal but he was coming year? off injury and yeah. he, never, he, didn't, he didn't touch the net in that series, right? Yeah, so, and that's yeah. what I mean. Like, like, you, like you have physically have the body who can play and are in the net, willing but to do go you want it. him do you want him to be in the net probably not it's a, and uh it's a group our holpy situation it's like both a little bit yeah it's like both yeah work. it's not a bad comparison yeah well so here's the thing right because grubauer was into going into the playoffs he was the, the hotter you know nailed on starter right Grubauer is the sammy and, I, I, in this situation and where i was going with this is um you want the hot hand going to the playoffs you want the goalie that is in better form to be the guy. I mean, if you have the most talented goal in the world, but he's not, if he's on a bad streak, do you really want that going into the playoffs? Or if you have someone else who's, who is hot, you ask the guy you want, but regardless. Okay. One thing, one thing to add on the Sammy front, 
uh, his home record. What's his home record, Dave? Do you give it? You want to ballpark it uh, in twenty? Where on my games? life he has like he has like three losses in twenty two games or something like that. Is 18, it eighteen two and two? That's yeah, pretty good, right, actually. So, so, so listen, oh, yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah, it is. So listen, I think if we have a nice the... advantage, right? Yeah, like you got to start him game one. How do you? One hundred percent. Another thing as well, I believe, he, and he's not even got like the best home record for a goalie because oh, I think all mark. I think all mark is legitimately like thirty and two, if I'm not mistaken. That's gross, like, man. That insane. is so gross. Like, what? Yeah. What is that? A couple, did, couple uh, quick things. Or uh, did I already run out of my time, Brian? Uh, uh, you know what? We can go to another five. Yeah. That's, that's I think, away. okay, so well, uh, I want to say one thing on the Ottawa yeah. front. On the Ottawa game front, you know, they, they had a very good game against the, the Hurricanes the night before. They come into Ottawa. Dude, Ottawa is going to skate you into the ground. Like, no matter what, that could have been were, the 32nd up. rank. That could have been the 32nd rank Ottawa, Senate, Ottawa Senators. Uh, they were going to skate the Leafs into the ground, like regardless. Like the, there, there was no doubt in my mind that, that they were going to get fired up for that game. Uh, so to see the Leafs allow, like I think it was close to 50 shots, I was like, okay, yeah, you probably want to limit limit some of the chances. You know, it was literally like a um, – like they doubled us in shots, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I was pretty happy to see the resiliency for the team. You know, in years past – that a type of game like that would have resulted in like a six three loss, seven two loss, something something ridiculous like that. Uh, so I'm happy to see that you know they they took the lead going into the last uh, couple minutes of the game. And the one other thing I want to bring up is how the refs nearly sold that game on the Leafs. Listen, I get it. The Leafs did not have a fantastic game. The game there was a game tying goal before the game tying goal which the Leafs ended up getting lucky on. But you cannot tell me that there was two penalties, uh, I believe both on Matthew Kachuk, called, oh, sorry, called, yeah, on Matthew Kachuk at Brady the end Kachuk. of the game. Brady Kachuk. Oh, Brady Kachuk, whatever. Okay. Same person, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Honestly, might as well. And, um, and you can't tell me that both of them weren't like clear embellishment calls. Like those were awful, awful calls. And it put the Leafs down for four minutes with like five minutes to go in the game. It's like, of course, the, the Sens are going to, you know, they're fired up all game. They scored once. It was offside. Then they scored with like 19 seconds to go. It's just like, come on, Listen, guys. Like, really- we talk about goalies being informed. The refs were informed because we, we know come playoff time, there's going to be some, some real just brain farts, right? So, yeah. I, th- I think like you said, though, resiliency – to have the refs have these brain farts and yet still come up with the win is great to see. And, it is and not lose right? your head on stuff like if, that yes. either. Yes. If you guys lost the yeah. game over the, um, that Justin Hall love tap, like on, uh, I think it was Kachuk's Oh, we did. Yeah. Like if, no, oh, oh, that one, if, uh, McCabe. Yes, yeah, so like if, if you guys lost the game uh, off of that, you guys would be fuming. But the fact of the matter is you guys got two points. <laughs> Under the bridge. Yeah, Heinz is only 20 for sure, but yeah. I don't yeah. know. I think, I think the like, rep stuff Ottawa shouldn't – they should have came out with a point because of the performance, but they also shouldn't have come out of that game with a point because – they should have never got to overtime. Yes. They shouldn't have even got to that point, basically, right? Like, I, that, that game should have been done and dusted, you know, before – uh, Brady tied it with like 20 seconds to go or something. Like that, Another right? thing I just so. wanted to bring up is we're getting to the point where it's like almost playoff season, we're almost there, and we're dying for it. But that, like, those calls don't happen in the playoffs. You can take someone's head off, and they probably wouldn't call it in the playoffs, right? So, I don't know, Brian. There's sometimes there's some stuff that mm, I, I would say. I would say for the Leafs, it, it's like it's a. It feels it's usually like, not a especially thing. last year. Especially last year, it was like a tale of two series because the first, yeah. I'd say, three games oh. of that series, there yeah. there must have been like, there was like five calls a piece. There was like five yeah. power plays per team. Then the last four games of that series, there was five calls for both teams in four games, like combined five calls. You know yeah. what I mean? There was like three power plays in like game six they and just, seven. They changed the precedent like that. It's like, what yeah, the hell? I mean, the all we ask for is some consistency. If you're going to be consistent, if you're going to be trash, be consistently trash. At least we'll expect it, right? So, yeah. Um, Yarn Crow, 
two goal night, sniped it, just absolutely ripped two goals home. Um, he's been on fire. I think he's got six points in four games. Do we like him on that first line, Dave? Where, where, where do we do we like that? And the, there's the yarn crow context, and there's also the bunting context because it means bunting is not on that first line. Is there a yeah, way for so, this team to be configured that has Yarn Croak on the first line and bunting somewhere else that we like? I hmm. Cause that would it's mean tough. that that would mean that okay, like when everybody's healthy, that would mean that somebody like O'Reilly wouldn't be on that second line. Like he'd be your third center and you if you have bunting on that second line. Bunting on saying, the second right? line? Yeah. Yeah. I mean I wonder if there's a way to go Bunting and O'Reilly together on a third line, but then you have Ooh. to you have to throw Kerfoot into the, the the square peg into the round hole on the second line, which I don't know if we like. But I I, w- I think I would rather see oh O'Reilly so maybe awful. loaded top six. You know what? Yeah. And listen, listen. I think it has to be loaded top six because um, we talked about O'Reilly's. I don't think he's gonna be taking faceoffs this third just with his finger. I'd be surprised. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm, like, if Bunting is on the third line instead of Yarn Crow, I still see a world where that can work. Like, I feel like if you go Bunting, Camp, Shari, I like that. Those are three feisty guys. Camp elevates I, his intensity I still from think, last time. I like it. I still, I genuinely think like whatever we think the lineup's going to look like in Game right. One, it just will not even look like. like it, there's going to be something completely different by Game One. We're going to see something new this week, uh, right? Because Sheldon Keith's been like having that neutral bullet blunder Mr. going Tinker. for the past past month. That guy's like nonstop, just going like with that with the neutral bullet. Oh, yeah, it's it's insane, right? So you know what? Hats off to Cali Arncro because it looks like he's really stepped up um, to the plate. You know, career high in goals and points now with his two goal night on against Ottawa. Um, so good for him. He's got an outside chance at twenty, man. There. I hope he gets hey, it. He might hit it. I hope he does too. Um, another thing I want to bring up is like, where does somebody like Sam Lafferty end up? I, I have a lot of leaf. I could see yeah. on Twitter a lot of people are already starting to get on him. He, ah, man, I, I really want to like him. I really do. But he's just not doing enough just yet to make me like him. Uh, I, I said maybe, I think I said like a week or two ago that I was like, oh, I'm expecting a Sam Lafferty goal. I forget what game it was, but I was like, and he, you know what? He actually genuinely, I think uh, that might've been the game before the devils thing. It, that yeah. was the game where it was like him, yarn croak and who was on the line with them. Nylander. Uh, Nylander. That was that, that makeshift Listen, second line. It was a good game by him, man. Where they played that really was well. That a good game. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he was genuinely like a catalyst for that line. So I was like, oh, fantastic. Maybe we get more of that. That's the one thing I'd like to see more of that than him. Sometimes it just feels like he's he's listlessly skating. So, you know, fix improve that. That's what I want to see. Uh, I do think he's really it's a little mental with him too because I think that he's a little worried that he's got to get that first one. Um, simplify, just simplify the game. Fit in the in the bottom six. Um, you don't have to be a punt guy where just nothing happens on the ice, but. Um, bring an identity team. down there yes yeah and I, I i still have confidence that he can do that i think it's still fairly early and we did see good signs of life um in the past games that he's played yeah maybe last couple games haven't really noticed him i think he had that one shot i think it was against carolina where it just flubbed off his stick and it was like where the hell were you shooting that one lafferty but yeah listen it's okay it's okay i think we covered everything um yeah actually okay wait very, very not even like this is just like 10 seconds here it was nice to see bunting score in the shootout because i feel like it, it that does mean a little something to him just to do something for the boys same goes for curfew to get the winner huge for him yeah huge confidence oh yeah boys. that's Especially all for curfew yep yeah so here's your five minutes brian <laughs> actually it was uh 10 but it's okay uh oh. you guys are forgiven you guys five minutes each don't worry uh i was just gonna make a joke uh, but like it's okay. The joke was I was gonna say is Jason Spets is gonna get a one day like a six month like a three month contract to get into the playoffs. But dude, dude, I always thought it's that gonna was be gonna a month, happen, bro. Yeah, it'll, man. it'll be I was, literally I was signed at deadline. It's signed it <laughs> day of. I think the day of my birthday, April fourteenth, might be like the day. It's the day after. I think the end of the regular season, if I I'm not mistaken. Right. So it's like yeah. sign him that day. You get him for a month. You at least have him for like. I don't know. Yeah, three months. You know, hope for the best. You probably need about three months. So, 
Anyway, you know, we'll get him in there. Uh, we'll see him in the finals. Dave, you didn't end up getting a Ryan O'Reilly St. Pat's jersey, right? I did it. Uh, I, I uh, generally, I think if he signs on, I'll consider it into the off season. Like I'll find a blank one and I'll go get it pressed on. So if you're not he had gonna... played. It'd be a different scenario because you could always say like, "Hey, he played that one game." Because he didn't play. Yeah, kind of I think it's me even. I think it's more unique that he didn't play. Like, let's say hy- hypothetically, this is the only time he plays for the Leafs, and he that was the only chance he got to play in those jerseys. But because he technically was on the roster, like he was on the team, you could still make that. Like, it's not like that's, that's oh, but Brian O'Reilly said. never played in those jerseys. That's I don't know. Dave, I kind of. It is a jersey sin, but it's it's a yeah. unique jersey sin. Like I don't know. There's I a think story it's a behind unique it. one. And, There's a story behind. And I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, after this, I'll tell you about the worst jersey sin I've ever seen in my life. But that's a story for another time. What I was going t- to talk about was um, the reason I brought it with Ryan Riley St. Pat's is because I was going to say I expect you to buy it using our link below at angelshop.ca. Shout out to Pubo. Shout out to Razor. Thank you for listening. I know I said that the, past, the next couple episodes until playoffs will be 45 minutes. I apologize, but we just love doing this. We just love talking. And hopefully, we'll come up with more articles, more stuff, and um, Dave's going to come up with more TikToks. That is it for this 100%. week. Thank you for listening.